Hey, 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 good evening. God bless you, everybody. Good to see you online today. Amen. Hope you had a blessed day. Hope you had a great day. Hope the blessing of the Lord has followed you and overtaken you in this season. Listen, let's remember, do me a favor. Help me now to spread the gospel. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. That somebody may receive this word on tonight and be blessed. Um, let's remember this Sunday, Chicago, we're in the building celebrating our 22nd year pastor and church's anniversary. Yes, God has been good to us. He has been faithful. And we are want to come out and acknowledge him and celebrate him and bring our sacrificial seed and give it to him from our heart. Amen. So please, everyone invite somebody be in the building this sunday celebrating what god has done what he is doing as we celebrate 22 years of anniversary of serving god and taking it to the next level amen during that week after the anniversary we will be again a brief sabbatical that week there will be no bible class there will be no women's ministry coming up we're going to take a little break amen going into the year and we're going to prepare for the next year of ministry and listen for the next year of ministry, God has laid a lesson on my heart um, for us. Now, I, I didn't say you, for us as we proceed into this next year of ministry. Um, it is a powerful teaching. It is an awakening. It is something that we tonight will have to evaluate ourselves. The scriptures say, let a man examine himself. And tonight we're going to have to examine ourselves to really see where we are. Because there's an untapped power that we are missing out on God. He's blessing us. He's keeping us. But we are missing out on an untapped power. And it's been so blatant. You know, on social media, we have, I've seen people who don't go to church talk about this. I've seen people who do go to church talk about this. Um, and, and I heard a, a, a young lady talking about this and it sparked a series in me. And God began to speak to my heart and research some things and get some things and takes evaluation. To see is this where we are really as the church? Is this where we are that we are not really operating in the power of God for deliverance, operating in the power of God to see miracle signs and wonders? And tonight we start a series where we have to be honest with ourselves. Amen. And to go to the next level, we have to be honest with ourselves and to change anything that's, that's keeping us Amen. From going to the next level and really experiencing the, the encounter with God, the next level of God, the next level of, of resources, the next level of blessings. We have to get to a place and really, really be real with ourselves tonight. So get your Bibles ready. Get your notepads ready. We are going to embark on learning right now. Amen. In a new series. This new series is called Casual Christianity. Casual Christianity. Christianity. It is something that God has been bothered with. It is something that God is speaking to us in. And tonight we have to examine ourselves. I need somebody to put in the chat. I am going to examine myself tonight. I need your amens. I need your right. I need to acknowledge this on tonight. Fill the chat with truth. Fill the chat with truth. It's so funny that um, when truth comes out, it goes nowhere. But when mess comes out, rumor comes out, Anything crazy, it goes viral because we're living in a culture that we're, we're thriving on chaos. We, 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 we thrive on bad things. We spread bad news, but the truth comes out. Nobody is uh, spreading it. Nobody is sharing it. So this lesson, this series that we are embarking upon so that we as St. Mark church family can go to the next level. And I believe I see some, I see our church in this text tonight as we begin to go forth because we have got to get to a place, amen, where we're, we'll get back to the power of God, get back to the worship of God, get back to the praise of God, get back to the word of God in the manner that God wants us in and not how we see we need to be in it. So let's get ready to have a prayer. Then we're going to go to our scripture and our lesson into this series. This series, again, is entitled Casual Christianity, casual Christianity. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to our prayer right now. Father God, we thank you for this time today. We thank you for what you are about to do in our spirits, in our minds, and in our hearts. We thank you, oh God, that you're about to lift us up. 
Heavenly Father, to give us insight and clarity so that we can understand where we need to be in you, so that we can be impactful, so that we can be influential, so that you can get the glory, the honor, and the praise out of our life. Lord, I've studied, I've prayed, and I've researched. I ask you now, oh God, that you allow me to decrease, that you may increase, that your people will be blessed and you will be glorified in all that's said and done. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Lord, my strength and my redeemer, I pray tonight. Amen. Amen. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. It's time to evangelize. It's time to dig. I need you. I need you to be real with me on tonight. I need you to listen because I'm going to um, give you the scripture. I'm going to exegetically summarize it, and then we're going to deal with some practical things after I exegetically summarize the text that we read. Amen. Hope you got your Bibles ready. Hope you got your notepads ready because we are in a season because there's so much a soothing word for our own personal use, but we're not taking a word what God has said to, to grow us, to, to challenge us, and to hold us accountable. And this is where our growth and, and the power of God will rest on us. How many of you all want to get to the place where the power of God rests on me so much that people come and ask me, what is it about you? And then you can share Jesus and their lives are changed. And then they want to come to Christ. And then they want to know about Christ by just the way we carry and conduct ourselves. Amen. So tonight we start the series, Casual Christianity. Um, our lesson comes from Revelations chapter 3, verse 14 through verse 22. On tonight, Revelations, last book of the Bible. Um, the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verses 14 through verse 22. You got it? Follow along with me. It says, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodicea, of Laodiceans, right? And now we says the angel of the church, he's talking about the pastor of the church. They've been got to teach this lesson. We get it. He's talking when he says when in the Revelation, when they say, right to the angel of the church, he's talking about the pastor of these churches in Laodiceans. He says, Write these things, said the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He says, watch this, verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, I like that word, because that's the word we're going to be centering on tonight. Because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I spew you thee out of my mouth. He's saying, Jesus said, you're not cold or hot, you're lukewarm, and because you're lukewarm, I spit you. I get rid of you. I spew you out of my mouth because thou sayest. Here's the reason. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and I have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thee thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see as many as I love, watch this, I rebuke and chasten, as many as I love. He says, I love, those who I love, I rebuke and I chastise, I hold them accountable. He says, be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and, and be with him. He says, when I knock, if you open the door, I'm coming in. I'm going to be with you. Verse 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I overcame and sit down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He's writing a letter to the churches. He's speaking. This is John. He's out on the island of Patmos where he's been exiled to, and he's in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and God begins to deal with him. God begins to, to, to give him insight unto the churches, the seven churches in Revelation, and he has a letter for every pastor that goes to every pastor for that particular church. This is the church of Leo, Laodiceans, okay? The lukewarm church. I like that word, lukewarm. Lukewarm church. 
okay? And tonight's lesson is entitled Casual Christians. My God, casual Christians. Mm. Help us tonight, Jesus. Mahat Mahatma Gandhi has a quote, and his quote said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. My God. Let me read that again. That's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi. I like your Christ. I want to follow your Christ. I like the character. I like the compassion. There's something that compels me to like this Jesus. I like your Christ. He says, I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. I don't, a Christian, Christian means Christ-like. So he's saying, although the Christian means to be Christ-like, I am not seeing the same characteristics of your Christians that I see in your Christ. And he says, this is the reason I don't follow your your." your Christ because of the, the actions and the display of what Christians put out. Because Christians seem to look as worldly as those in the world and not look more like Christ. So as we exegetically summarize this text, follow along with me, and then we're going to get some practical things. Casual Christianity. So here in this text, here in this text, John is out on the item but exiled out, out on the island of Patmos, and God is speaking to him. He's letting him know there's some things uh, I, I, I value about these churches. There's some good things about these churches, but there are also some things that I have a problem with. So the first thing we have to understand is never get so comfortable that we think God is pleased with everything we do. Come on, somebody. Never get so comfortable and cocky that we think God is pleased with our worship. He's pleased with our praise. He's pleased with our prayer life. Because that's when we get to this magnitude and we're going to get into this, this casual thing. And, and, and we've gotten to a place where we are too casual with God. In this text, God writes, yes, you have good things that's going on in church, but I have a problem with this area. I need this fix. Amen. So, so in this text, um, in this text, we've got a church that is lukewarm. Put that on your screen. Write that in your notes. Highlight that in your Bible. The word lukewarm. He has a church in Laodiceans that he says is lukewarm. They are not cold like the water in Colossus, which came to them from 10 miles away. Uh, nor are they like the hot springs that come from uh, Aeropolis that comes from six miles away. You see, the water from these two spots uh, were, were piped together and ran into Laodicea. They had water pipes from, from these two areas, Colossus and Aeropolis, that would run into Laodicea because they didn't have their own water supply. And once you got the water from, the, um, from Colossus, it wasn't cold anymore. It was lukewarm. Once the water came in from Aeropolis, it was no longer hot. It was lukewarm. In fact, the water that came into Laodicea didn't taste very good. By the time it got to um, the city from these two spots, spots where they ran the pipeline from, it was actually disgusting. In Colossus, it was cold. In Aeropolis, it was hot. But by the time it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm and it was disgusting. The hot water, when it was hot, watch this, it was good for medicinal purposes and cold water, uh, as long as it was cold, was refreshing to drink. But lukewarm water was useless. It was useless. So the point of describing lukewarm water is that to understand that it was disgusting. If you ever had lukewarm water, it's not, it's not really something you want to taste or not something you want to swallow. So the, the point of this lukewarm water that Jesus is expressing to John about the church at Laodicea is that it is useless. Not not something that he desires. It's not something he desires. We as the body of Christ got to stop and get out the place to think that everything we offer to God, that he accepts it. He desires it. He wants it. He's addressing this right now with this church. It's lukewarm. It's lukewarm. He, in the scripture, he said, when he tasted the lukewarmness, 
He spit it out. He didn't want to swallow it. He didn't want to receive it because it was disgusting to him. So the point of describing this, Jesus finds lukewarm church to be disgusting. He finds lukewarm Christians to be disgusting, not something that he desires. My God, are y'all following me right now? I'm trying to walk through this lesson slow because God is trying to get us, not notice I didn't say y'all, get us back to the place that we can experience his power and his joy and that he accepts and would give us things. So it's not something he desires. The reason, watch this, the reason for them being lukewarm was because they were self-satisfied. Let me say that again. The reason that they were lukewarm because they became self-satisfied, uncommitted, mad, they were uncommitted, matter is that they think that since they are rich, since they are rich, that they were wealthy and had what they needed and what they desired. Now, many of us know that we're not rich, but most of us are in a place that we feel. And let's be honest on this line tonight, because we talking about we got to get the cash of Christian. We, we feel I got everything I need. I don't have everything I want, but I got everything I need. And I'm good. I got a roof over my head. I got a job. I got this coming in. I got, and I'm good. You feel like the blessings of God have overtaken me, even though there's more that God wants to do and give us. So, so they had gotten to a place that they were self-satisfied and they were uncommitted because of what they had. They had gotten to a place that they had what they had, what they needed, and they were moving in a way, and, 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 and their wealthiness and their what they had, they, they act like they didn't desire any more things from God. Laodicea, the city of Laodicea, please hear this because it's going to remind us of cities we live in, was a banking center, okay? I'm trying to teach this lesson slow. The city of Laodicea was a banking center because of the wealth that they were leisure and cultural aspects such as uh, gladi gladi um, gladiatorial games and modern times will be sports and theater. Our times will be movies and celebrity worship, comfort, time off, freedom to do whatever they please, diversions of all kinds and all sorts of things to relax with and take your mind off of things. It was a city um, it was a, an important city because it also had a major textile history. Let me read that again. I need we, us to get this lesson. The city of La La Laodicea was a banking center. It was wealthy. It had plenty of leisure things, cultural aspects, gladiatorial games. You watch sports. And I just enjoyed the NCAA women's basketball tournament. It's been watched by many other people with screaming and selling and celebrating. We enjoy these things. Modern day sports, theater, we go to the theater, we go to movies. And what we don't realize is some of these people that we are doing, we are celebrity worshiping. We are celebrity worshiping. Even our own gospel artists, we don't see Jesus, we go for the people. Amen. Comfort, we're in comfort. Time off, we travel, we have vacations, we got time off to do whatever we want to do. And whatever we do is pleasing to us. All of these different distractions and diversions of all kinds, of all sorts of things to relax with, to take your mind off of things. It was an important city because it also had a major textile industry. Now, that means clothing, clothing. Amen. We shopping now, we getting Michael Kors, we getting Gucci, we getting Prada, we getting Louis, we getting name brand stuff. Amen. More things than our ancestors had. It was a clothing was made there. They had a very unique product called black wool. It was called Black Wool, Gucci, Prada, Louis. It was a very unique product that they produced. Since it was a rare and exotic fabric, it was expensive and it was valuable. And there was a medical school there, um, and the city was famous for its eye salve. Um, um, among other medical breakthroughs. So this city has got it going on. Watch this. And because of what's going on in the city, because what's accessible to these believers, their, attitudes, their, attitudes, um, th their attitude was, we're doing great. We don't need anything. The attitude was, I'm cool. I'm blessed and highly favored. I can travel. I go on vacation. I got my mind, take my mind off things. And they give it all their energy and all their priority and all their planning to the things of the world. 
the culture, the, the experiencing the movies and all these things. This is the attitude had become casual. They were good. And many of us on this line, we think we good. Let's be real. You, you good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm going. I'm good. I'm good. That's our attitude. They thought they were good and they don't need anything. And whatever they did need, I'm working every day. I'm saving. I'll go get it. Now, Jesus is telling this self-satisfied church that's, that's gotten to a place that they think they good and they think they got this and they think they moving and I got a nice place to live and I got this and I got Jesus is talking this to this self-satisfied church. He says, I want water that will refresh me. I want praise that will refresh me. I want worship that will refresh me. I want service that's going to refresh me. He says, but you remind me instead of the water, watch this now, that you are always complaining about. You, your lack of zeal makes me want to vomit. Your lack of, you get no zeal. You got no, no energy when it comes to serving me. You got no energy when it comes to praising me. You got no energy when it comes to worshiping me. He said, the thing that you, com you complaining about this water you getting, and you giving me the same thing. And many of us complain about so many things, but you're giving Jesus the same attitude. You're giving Jesus the same attitude. You complain about the blessing you got, and you're giving Jesus that same attitude when it comes to serving, when it comes to sacrifice, and when it comes to sowing. We are giving Jesus the same attitude of some of the things that we are complaining about and the other things because you got wrapped up in it. I'm good. I'm blessed. I got these other things, but there is some little things I complain about. And God is saying, he tells this church, yeah, you got all this stuff going on, but you're not refreshing me. You giving me this stuff, and you act like I'm supposed to be happy with it. You giving me this, this, this self, this, this making me second and third and fourth in your life, and I'm supposed to receive that, but it's lukewarm. It's not tasty to me. It's not refreshing to me. It's not giving me what I desire, what I deserve. Their wealth was a problem. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Their blessings had become a problem. How many of us tonight, I told you this is a self-examination teaching that God is speaking. Their wealth, their blessing had become a problem because you were so caught up in what you had now from where you came from, you forgot how you got it. You worship, you, you were so caught up in the blessing, you forgot the, the blesser who gave it to you. You were so caught up in all this other stuff, you give more energy to everything outside of church. You go beyond, you go every day to do this, do that. But when it comes to doing stuff for ministry, there is no sacrifice no more. I'll try to fit it in. I'll see if I can get there. I just don't feel it. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. But forgetting about the God that got me there. Now you want to enjoy the blessing and, and discount and excuse the person in Jesus Christ that gave us the blessing. They were self-satisfied. He says, you're not refreshing me. You, you don't praise me like you ought to. You, were, you said you're reminding me of the very thing you complain about. Your lack of zeal makes me want to vomit. Your lack of enthusiasm when it comes to the things of God, he says, it's lukewarm. You're doing it out of routine. You're not doing it from your heart anymore. You're not doing it because you're grateful. You're not doing it before because you realize if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I never would have made it and I never would have had these things. You're doing it out of routine. You're not doing it from your heart. You are not. You have no energy with it. You have an attitude when you do it. You don't even put no thought into it. You're going to do it this way. We put more thought into how we vacation than how we serve God. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this together and let them receive that. We put we plan vacations, we plan where we're going, we get it in people in order, we plan what, what, what we're gonna do each day, and we do it with zeal. But when it comes to Jesus now, you have no zeal for the things of God. You only care about the blessings, but you don't care about him, he says. He said, and your lack, watch this, your lack of zeal, your lack of excitement, your lack. Of, of coming to me with it says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness because see, that that gladness and that joyfulness is gone it's not a zeal and as he said that worship what you think I'm receiving makes me want to vomit it's lukewarm their wealth had become a problem it had made them too comfortable Watch this. How many of us are going to admit tonight you've gotten comfortable with your Christianity? 
You've got comfortable with where you are in Christ. You got comfortable with your mindset about search. You, he says, you, you, they got too comfortable and blinded them to what their faith was really all about. It blinded them to what the faith was all about. Now, the dangers of material wealth, here's some dangers of material wealth that can lead to spiritual poverty, that can meet, lead us to being too casual. One is self-sufficiency. We've gotten so much now, we, we, we depend on ourselves. It's self-sufficiency, trusting in what you have acquired and what we have acquired. Is, is, is it enough? I don't need anything else. If I do, I get it. So we don't pray or we don't rely on other Christians. I don't, I don't pay attention to the preaching and the teaching. It really doesn't matter. I don't even go to church. And when I do go to church, I don't go with the right mindset and right mentality. I'm all right. Me and mine is good. So I don't go with that enthusiasm. We don't go with that love. We don't go seeking God's presence. We don't go seeking another level. We don't go because we have become self-sufficient. I can get what I need. I can move how I move. And it's become self-sufficient. And, 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 and we don't even listen to the preaching and the teaching anymore. Especially when it don't fit what we want to do. Come on, somebody. The another, another dangerous thing that had, has become, had become to them was their pride. Oh, my God. This is something we all battle with that we don't want to acknowledge. Pride. Look at what I have and how much I've accomplished by myself, for myself. Pride. Look at what I've done by myself, for myself. Acting like we, like God had no hand in it anymore. We, we've, got, we've become so self-sufficient that we become prideful and we don't even recognize it. Thinking you don't need or you don't want anyone's help outside anymore. You think you don't need God's help and nobody else's help, including help from the Lord until trouble comes. When trouble comes, oh, then we go back to, amen, that need. When trouble comes, we know how to pray. When trouble comes, we'll give. People will try to give their way out of trouble. You ain't thought about giving. You ain't thought about sacrificing. That's been the furthest thing from your mind because you have been self-sufficient and dependent on the wrong people and gotten in relationships that have taken you away from Christ and you're no longer doing the things because you were satisfied with what you were doing. And as soon as trouble comes, now let me give my way out. When trouble comes, let me pray more. When trouble comes, let me worship. Let me lay prostrate. But all these things I know and void when we think we're doing it, when we think we're doing good. Prosperity causes blindness to reality. Prosperity can cause blindness to reality. He is dealing with the lukewarm church. These are the things that are happening in Laodicea. He said, just like the water you're getting, it's lukewarm and I'm spitting you out. I can't treat this. You're not hot. You're not cold. He said, I would rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm. When you're lukewarm, that, that, that lukewarm worship, that, that lukewarm attitude, that luke, your, your mentality is lukewarm. You complain, you come, you, you, your body is there, but your mind is every place else. Somebody got to pay Simon says to get you in my presence. Amen. You, you, we're, not, we're not coming seeking God like we ought to because of who he is. We're not even praising him for the faith. We're being more complaining about the blessings now than, than, than we get them. We do more complaining. This is what my hot guy was saying. When I hear things coming out your Christians, I don't want to follow your Christ because your Christians are so unlike you. Now let's look at the analysis of, of let's get this more practical. We live in a day, in a culture, in a society of casual. Follow along with me because this is just the introduction to the series. We live in a day and we live in a society, how many of you agree, where everything seems to have become casual. There is hardly an area of life where casual dress hasn't become the norm. Dinner, casual. Travel, how you see how people travel now? Bonnets, I go to the airport in, in pajamas, in, in, in are these bonnets and dressing like uh, uh, just casual. Travel, parties, casual. Weddings, uh, come dress to weddings, casual. Go to funerals, casual. School, casual. Church, casual. Casual seems considered adequate by many, for many, for any occasion or activity now. 
the casual dress that comes from a casual. Watch this. Casual just seems to be the, 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 the thing of the day now. Apart from modesty or challenging authority, God's concern doesn't generally revolve around how people decide to dress. It's really not about the dress. It runs deeper. Follow along with me. Casual has become just, not just a way of dress, but also an attitude of our time. See, the problem with the dress, it gives us a, the wrong attitude. It's not the clothes. It's the attitude that come with it. My God, my God, my God. When, we, when, we, when you feel a certain way, you, you give your best. This, this casualness has caused us to become casual in our attitude, which makes us casual in our relationship with Jesus. My God, God is revealing to us. How many of you all have gotten too comfortable with Jesus? You got a casual relationship with him. He's not the king of kings. You got him on your level. You talk to him when you feel like it. You don't honor him the way we need to be honoring him. We got a casualness to our relationship now with Christ. So the casual is not the dress. It runs deeper. The casual has become not just a way to dress and attend functions, but an attitude of the times and the culture that we live in. It is used to describe the areas of life central to who we are. Let me give you an example. For instance, for example, casual is coupled with words like casual sex, casual friendships, casual business relationships, casual commitments. Nothing is indebted. Everything is casual. And you wonder why relationships don't last? Why you can't build? Because you got it in a casual way. It's not real. And casual is a dangerous word. Uh, you got you having casual sex, you have a casual friendship, you have a casual business relationship, casual commitment. Now, the word, please write this down. And I'll say it a couple of times because you got to understand we are moving into this thing. The word casual is, is by definition a lack of emotional commitment. Woo. So when you're talking about sex and friendships and business relationships, it's a lack. You got them, but it's a lack there of emotional commitment. You're not committed to it. That's why you jump around to all kind of friends and all kind of business but because you're not committed. Casual means I'm not committed. And what we're saying, we're not really committed to Christ. I'm not 10 toes down. I, I'm going to move how I want to move. I'm going to come when I want to come because I'm not committed like that. I'm not sold out like that. I have a casual relationship, a casual faith, and, and now we're not and we're not experiencing the, the fullness of God, the power of God, because we have this casual relationship. As we had, watch this, we've taken the casual relationships on earth and attached them to the casual relationship with God. Casual, with casual, the word casual the definition, emotion, lack of emotional commitment, seriousness, and loyalty. My God, who are we loyal to today? We, we're not loyal. We, we're not loyal. I said, you know what? Muslims are loyal to their teachings. You're not going to find them straying, jumping all over the place. Jehovah's Witnesses are loyal. Come on, somebody. Catholics are loyal. Protestants are loyal. Christians, we are all over the place. That's why we're so messed up. We go to all kinds of teachings. We support every, everybody else because you're attached to them or you're friends with them. They have a different faith and you just run to it because you're not loyal to your own. They're loyal to theirs, but you're not loyal to yours. And they look at you when you run to that stuff as if you're weak. You're weak because you're not loyal to what you say you believe in. Because they're not going to support. They watch this. They're not going to even like the stuff you put on something. You will like their stuff on Facebook. They ain't going to like nothing you put. Put your church stuff on late on Facebook and see if you hit the, see if they like it, see if they comment about it. But you always liking their stuff. You always going to support their stuff because you cool. But they never support, never like anything you do because their faith is different, and they're ten toes down with what they believe. They're ten toes down in what they believe. The word can, but can it, it, it's, it's about. Lack of emotional commitment, a lack of how serious are you about your relationship with God? Is it a casual relationship? How loyal to you are him? 
to you how loyal it is watch this casual I mean it is permissive in its approach to things and has little interest or enthusiasm to be more to be more than superficially involved you just you just going along for the ride because that's a ca that casual you know you come to this stuff but you don't come with the right spirit you don't cover the heart. I just want to bless the people. I just want to serve the people because these are God's people. It's superficially involved. Though not many want, not many of us want to think of it this way, casualness mostly centers on me and doing what makes me comfortable. Wow. We've gotten to a place that we do ministry when it's comfortable for us. I'm going to come when I feel like it. If I do something like before, I know I'm supposed to be, I'm not going to show up on I had something to do, so I'm going to casually stroll in. Be glad I'm here. Casual, casualness is focused on me and doing what makes me comfortable, fix my schedule, and fulfills my agenda. I'll do ministry, amen, when it makes me comfortable, when it fits my schedule, and when it fits my agenda. But everything else outside of that, I'm going to plan it. It don't fit my agenda, but I'm going to make plans for it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. When it comes to ministry and your relationship with God, it has to now be comfortable for us. It has to fit our schedule. And it has to, and, and, and it has to, and it has to, amen, or fulfill our agenda. If it don't fulfill my agenda, I'm not all into it. So we got now developed this casual Christianity and we're crashing Christians because we're not sold out. We've become casual in everything in the world, in the culture, and we let that casual mentality seep into our relationships with God. This is what Jesus is telling the church in Laodicea. You're lukewarm. You've got me on a casual place, and I don't like it. He said, it's not hot or cold, so I spit it out my mouth. I'm not receiving what you give me because it's lukewarm. How dare us to give God this casual praise, this casual service, this 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 effort to fit into my schedule when it's comfortable with me, and think He's just accepting all that we all that 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 we're giving Him, and He's saying, "Nope, I don't want it. It's lukewarm. You give more energy to the things in the world and the culture than you do to me. You go out there, you laugh, you joke, you you, you do whatever you want to do. You all in, but then you come to church, you go to sleep." You go to church, you act like you don't understand the word. You go to church, you act like you just can't get into it. Somebody has to push you into it. But the casualness, we have made Christ casual in our lives. Now let's talk about this, the trap of casual faith. We have a casual faith now. And to move mountains, your, your faith can't be casual. To call down the power of God, your faith cannot be casual. You got to have a, a powerful faith. You can't have this casual relationship with God and think your faith is going to move mountains. So we, we, have a, we have a trap. The trap of casual faith is now right here, um, we're tempted to begin. This, I want to discuss the culture of what's happening to the attitudes today's with, the, with, our, with our youth. With our youth. In general, or in some other non-threatening venues, we could all agree on and discuss the critical indignation when it comes to our youth. Here's my deepest concern. Here's Jesus' deepest concern. Jesus' deepest concerns. Though none of us would suggest God is essential in our life, that he is not the center of our joy, none of us would suggest that or admit that. Though we mostly go to church with regularity or online regularity, and though we want our children to be taught in an environment where God is given his place, we can fall into living our faith with a casualness and borders on indifference. You're telling our children you need Jesus, but your attitude ain't showing you need Jesus. You're showing them get your job and you take care of yourself. We're not showing him that the job is just the source. God is your source. We're not showing our children anymore the importance of, of going to church. We're not showing our youth the importance of having God in your life because we tell them one thing and we act a whole nother way. And they see at church, yeah, at church you shout and at church you praise. But, but, but along the week, you're real casual with Jesus now. 
the places you go and the people you went, you sitting up doing stuff with them. But then you shout, but this is, but you telling me not to do this, but you sitting over here with, 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 with mom and them and auntie and them, and you telling me don't do this with my friends because you, you're a young, saved person and God want to use you. But now you over here with mom and auntie and sister and them, and you doing the same thing in front of me that you telling me don't do with my friends because it's casual. My God, he's talking to us tonight. We're not protecting your anointing anymore. We're telling our children one thing, but showing them another. We're showing them a casually, I'll give when I got it. Giving is not essential. We're not showing them the importance of, of giving a sacrificial seed. We're not showing them gratitude, the, how to be grateful to God. During, during the time, not when you're not out of church. Yeah, they see you shout at church. What do they see you? Move? How do they see you move at home? How do you see you move at home? God has given us place when we can fall into living our faith in a casualness that borders on indifference. Because when you're in a casualness, certain words you want to certain words you want to accept now. It has to fit your casualness. You want to change the, the scripture to fit how you want to move casually. Watch this. You want to change your calling. Because other people, it looks like they're more casual. Watch this. I'm talking to y'all elders and ministers right now. To whom much is given, much is required. Let me say that again. Let me talk to every leader. Not just the, the ministers, elders, especially. Every, to whom much is given, much is required. And to whom men, pastors, commit that thing to, they will expect more of you. You cannot be a member. Amen. I'm, I'm going to expect more of Elder Christian, Elder Johnson, Elder Pastor Reese than I do of a Kim Bradley or a Tia. Yes, you're part of the same church. You have the same Jesus, but you have a higher calling. I expect more of you. Don't act like, well, well Tia don't do it. And No, 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 no. You, you, you said you asked to call the leadership. I don't care what Tia ain't doing or what somebody or, or somebody brother Terry comes in. You are you answer the call to leadership. If you are not going to move into much is given, then you shouldn't answer that call because it's more required of you. You can't get in the call and then try to work your call like those who are not called to, to move how you move. Come on, oh, I'm teaching tonight. Because you become so casual that you want to be as, as just as a leader or as a minister or the youth pastor, just as casual as everybody else. Your call is not casual, baby. Your call called you to sacrifice. Your call, the things that I show you as a leader, I've come tired. I've come sick from day one. And I'm dealing with some things now, but I'm showing up for everybody. I'm moving everybody. You don't know. I might give my testimony later. I may not. But I'm moving. I've never stopped moving because my calling, I answer the call that God has called me and entrusted me to do. And regardless of where I am, regardless of who I am, I'm going to serve him the best and give him my best all the time. Even when I don't feel like it, I got to give him my best because that's my calling. He called me and I answered. You can't answer the call and then want to look around and want to be like everybody else. They're not. You're called to stand. You're called to speak. You're called to teach. You're called to undergird pastor. You can't move like other people move. Pastors, elders, leaders, you can't move like that. You got to show up when nobody else show up. If nobody else saying amen, my leaders, pastors, and elders got to be on their feet saying, go ahead on, pastor. If I'm moving in sickness and I'm moving in hurt and I'm moving in deacons, come on. If I'm moving in sickness, moving in hurt, you got to move the same way because your calling calls you that. Deacon means servant. Minister means servant. To whom much is given, much is required. You can't answer the call of leadership and then try to be casual like everybody else. And the first thing you want to point to, well, such and such ain't doing it. and such, I don't care if a leader ain't doing it. What did God call you to do? Peter? Feed my sheep. You love me? Feed my sheep. Yes, I love you, God. Then feed my sheep. Peter, you love me? Feed my sheep. Well, what is John going to do? Jesus replied, said, that ain't your concern. If I told John to sit right here until I come back and get all of my church, that's what he going to do. Your job is to do what I tell you to do, feed the sheep. Peter asked him, what is John going to do? And Jesus said, that ain't your business. Stop worrying about what other leaders or other somebody else is doing. You don't know what assignment they've been given. Why they ain't sure. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I just need you this day. 
Come on, somebody. We got to understand the mentality and the deepness of what we're called to do. But we've gotten so casual that leaders want to act like lay members. My God. Leaders want to come in late. You got, you got lay members showing up before leaders show up. You got, you got lay members looking for stuff to do that leaders trying to get out of doing. That you're supposed to be leading in doing. Because we've gotten casual. There is nothing that undermines a child's faith. Life more quickly than to see a parent, a leader, claim faith claim love for God, but live before them in a way that says something quite different. You're very casual. You, you, you don't talk about God at home. Your post don't, your post don't need to say, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. You put everything else on there in your story, you know, but you don't say nothing about, when do you, you don't say nothing about God's been good to me today. Y'all need Jesus in your life. There's nothing you put on your post that suggests that God is the head of your life. There's nothing you you there's nothing you put out there that says Jesus is the answer. We do all this other stuff. We put all this other stuff. We post all these other things and never look at what we don't post because you know why? He's casual. He's not even first anymore. We want all the blessings of God for ourselves and for our children and for the next generation. We want all this stuff, but we want we want them to know. The, um, that they will walk in the footprints of faith we have laid down before them. But what are we showing them? Some of us, we giving them options. Joshua said like this, ask me in my house. You ain't grown yet, you're not out of my house. You ain't grown yet in the house. You have no options. You, you, some things you got no options to do. We're giving them options to do all this worldly stuff, to wear all this, all this worldly things. Some of our young girls got yeah, wearing all these lashes and long hair and like 15, 16 and look like they're 23. Have men approach them because of how they look. You're giving them all these options. But when it comes to Christ, you got an option. You don't got to go. You don't got to serve. You don't got to get online. You got to learn to him. But everything else, because it's casual. And when that happens, you know what we've done? We have just made God second casualness makes God second fiddle. Here's what I'm suggesting tonight. Here's what God is saying. If our excitement reflects itself in the latest sporting event, we scream and yell at TVs. It's so exciting about people we don't know, who, people who can't even hear us cheering for them. But we, and we will we'll at them and all this kind of stuff. But we aren't much excited about the things of God. You're excited about vacation. You're excited about all this other stuff, all this worldly culture thing. You're excited about it. I'm playing. Oh yeah, I'm going. We're going. We're going to turn up. We're going to do this. But nobody said, "Oh no, we need to go to church. Turn up." I'm excited to church today. We're we're excited about everything but the things of God. People will know what is important in life as far as we are concerned if our if our entertainment takes priority over worship or service to others, people will take note of that. People see that, that this is the way to live. That's why so many people go to church and don't want to serve no more because they don't see nobody trying to serve. They got a casualness. Come, do what you're going to do, go about your business, and keep living the same life. The Jesus you present them is the Jesus they're going to have. You, we're presenting a casual Jesus. Just come whenever you can and don't have to bless, don't have to sow, don't have to do this, and, and don't, don't have to do nothing. We're presenting this casual Jesus. And people now are, are accepting a casual Jesus that they don't have to sow. They can come when they feel like it. They can do what they want to do whenever they want to do it because we have presented that to them. If our entertainment takes priority over worship or service to others, people will take note of this. And they would have to live this way. If we are serious, brothers and sisters, about making money, but not about God's concern for the use of it, people will understand what has to be priority. And if what others see, if what others see shows our agendas take precedence over God's, what are our children, do they see and be, be, and some people in church will see, it seems that your personal agendas take precedence. I don't care what your calling is. You put this stuff before God. 
They will learn that they can just look good, but not worry so much about giving him priority in their life. Because we're presenting that. Just look, just, look, just look like you sold out. School is important. The critical question is not what our children learn of God at school, but what they learn from God at home from mom and dad, mom and dad. We're so worried about what they, they're not giving them black history. Are you teaching them at home? They, they, they excluded certain things about prayer and all this out of school. Do they see it at home? Do they see unity? Do they see a communication? Do they see compromise at home? What are they showing? What are, we, what are they getting at home? You complain about what they're not getting at school, but what are they not getting at home? What are they saying that needs to be corrected and challenged at home? My God today. The psalmist understood after reminding us that we are like grass, so gone out of their lives. He lays down a foundation for a legacy of living faith. He says in Psalms 103, 17 to 18, but the steadfast love the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on whose, on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandment from children's children. Your, your great grandchildren should know something about God and service and faithfulness and, 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 and seriousness based on what your children do. What have you shown them? What have you shown them? Casual doesn't go with fear. Let me say that again. Casual does not go with fear. Fear of God means he comes first. We're so casual with God now, we don't even fear him anymore. We don't even fear God. And that's supposed to be a healthy fear. As we put a healthy fear in the child, we're supposed to have the same healthy fear of God. We become so casual with how we pray, when we pray, what we study, what word we're going to receive, and what word we reject. Because if I don't like it, I feel like you pointed at me or somebody's going to say something, I'm rejecting it because you're so casual. We don't, even, we don't even fear God. He comes first, not just in word, but in our interest, in remembrance, in attention, in actions and priorities. God should be first in our lives. I really don't care what we wear to church. Nor are the things we say about God and our, our children are important. The real test comes from the point where they see the things we are excited about and give ourselves to. It's not about casual clothes. It's about that casual attitude that casual Christians now carry that says, this is optional. Jesus is optional. Worship is optional. Faithfulness is optional. Sewing is optional. Do you? And we've gotten to a place where people want to come and change the church because we're so casual. You, watch this. You don't hear about people joining the Muslims trying to trying to change their, their tire. They're always suited and booted. Got their ties on, out because 100 degrees. Their women cover up. Their women cover up. And nobody goes in there saying, you know what? Y'all out of date. Y'all got to evolve. Let's become more casual. Because they stand at 10 tones down on their standards and principles. Mm. Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not going to change them. If they'll show you their Bible. You try to show them something else, they're not going to look at it because they're 10 toes down on their principles and beliefs. It's not casual to them. We'll let anybody show us some, direct us some, go to somebody, support this. So, and we, we just jacked up because you know why? Because we got this casual attitude. It don't matter. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care if they don't. I still like them. I, but they ain't like it. Nothing you do. They don't come nothing you support. They cool with me. That casual mentality is messing people up. What do you see in your faith life? Is it commitment? Do you really see the commitment? Or do you see casualness? Do you see loyalty? Do you see seriousness? Do you see interest? Do you still see enthusiasm or just a casual attention that takes second place to the really exciting things that's going on? What do you really see? 
You're giving God this casual attention, the second place, the second, the, 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 the last of the energy, the last of the planning. Even if the church don't plan that, we know Easter, Easter, Pastor's anniversary, Chris, there's some things that should be on the calendar. I need to be in presence. I need, I can lock these things down for sure. So make sure, but we, we won't even do that. We're going to lock everything else down under the sun and be, and be available. But we stretched ourselves so thin during the year without a thought of, let me put myself in place for God. Let me, this, these are the things I need to be in place for. This is my faith. It's not casual. We will miss things for people who don't even, who are casual about God. Because you know why? You know why it's so easy to miss church for people that, that are casual about God with the attitude, oh, I go sometime and, do, and you don't got to go all the time and they're going to do that. Because you have, because you become casual. We become casual. So that's our lesson for tonight from this new series, The God is Speaking, Casual Christianity. Tonight's lesson was Casual Christians. If this sparked something, self-examination, how many of you examined yourself and saw some of the things that we talked about in ourselves tonight? Because we have gotten caught up in culture and culture says casual. And it's not about the casual clothes. It's about the casual thinking that we now have toward the things of God, toward the worship of God, toward the giving of God, toward the service for God. We are so casual with our study. We don't even come online in church. We come to church with so casual that we come and miss the power of God. And we come and miss the, the, the experience with God. Because we're so casual to come in and, 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 and not receive all of the word or all of the worship or all of the service. We take out what we want because we're so casual. And we give energy to everything else. But Jesus, we've been casual because watch this. When you're serving casual people, you tend not to give your best because you feel like, and I learned this in school, if you are teaching at a level seven and your students are level five, people will not go to the extreme because the students are not what they are. I'll give them anything because watch this. They're going to eat it up anyway. All they want to hear anyway is a self soothing message saying God going to bring me out. All they want to hear anyway is a message about how God going to bless me. They don't want to hear about what they need to do for the kingdom. They don't want to hear about how much they need to serve God. They don't want to hear about how God wants to use them. Because now when, the, when you're growing and you become a seven, your teacher's a five, something's wrong. That means you're sick and you're learning. You're growing. So you got to understand where is your relationship? Have you are you serving a casual? Are you serving Christ as casual? He has become casual to you. And let, let me go over that definition just one more time. I want you to make sure that we got um, that definition of what casual was. Okay, the word casual is by definition lack of emotional commitment, seriousness and loyalty. It is permissive in its approach to things and has little interest or enthusiasm to be more than superficially involved. Though not many want to think of it this way, casualness mostly centers on me, myself, and I. And doing what makes me comfortable fits my schedule and fits my agenda. And we have become casual Christians. We are the church of Laodicea. Lukewarm. Believing that God is accepting everything you put out and he's spitting it out. And that's why we're not experiencing God the way we need to experience him. God bless you, man. I hope you learned a lot from this lesson tonight. I had to give it to you. I'm looking forward to the series. Amen. If you learned something tonight, amen, put it in this chat. Fire. Say what you learned. Um, if you're blessed, if it sparks something, is it, if it sparks something that says, I need to take my relationship to God to the next level, I need to get this casual, this casual attitude, this casual 
this casual studying, this casual uh, worship, this casual prayer. I need to, I need to take it to, to sincerity. I need to worship him in spirit and truth because I give him, I'm giving everything else. Everything else, I'm giving energy. I show up every day for certain things, but then I come to church and watch them. Be careful. Even with the because casual dress creates a casual attitude. Now we comfortable in church, but there's some things we're going too far with coming to church now. You don't wear everything you go out to your places where you are to the church. Come on, somebody. Even casual, that's a casual dress. Still be dressed. But we can be too casual. And too casual brings us too casual mentality. It's not about the clothes. It's about the attitude. It's about the way we think. We become too casual with the things of God. Watch this. And we become too casual with Christ. He is not your friend like that. He is to be honored. He is to be reverenced. He is to be acknowledged. He is to be treated as the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is not somebody that we make casual. Amen. God bless you. We're standing in an invitation that may be somebody on this line tonight that wants to give their life to Jesus Christ. Now is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. All you have to do is say, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ tonight as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's what scripture says. Amen. Let's get ready to sow. Sow tonight. So tonight, and let's get ready to remember, we're in the building Sunday morning, thanking God, not casually, for 22 years of worship, 22 years he's been with us. Um, bring your seed offering, amen. It's a sacrifice, $200 seed offering. They were asking for everybody, be in obedience, amen. We've done everything else we want to get to. Be obedient in this. We're even casual in our obedience. We have a casual obedience. I'll do it if I feel like it. I, 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 I give what I can. We have it. We just didn't put, put it to the side because you we, we just don't put stuff to the side no more. Amen. God bless this time to take it to another level so that we experience the power of God like we've never experienced before. God bless you. May the Lord keep you. Now may the grace, the mercy, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of you God's children now more and forever. Let's say amen, amen, amen. I'll see y'all Sunday morning. Let's celebrate the risen king.